Hello everybody, my name is Anthony Jones, and this is going to be the Lighting Techniques Video 2, the sequel. Um, so this one's going to be talking a little bit about um, uh, material, uh, and very specifically metal versus matte. Um, and so I want to talk about how I light these different materials, and what strategies I use specifically, and how I think about them. Um, this is the one thing that I think a lot of people tend to ask me a lot and so uh, why not address it so first off let's just go ahead and get ourselves some sort of concept um, I'm gonna just go ahead and paint some sort of uh, knight in shining armor and I'm not gonna be very glorious with this painting I'm just going to get it to a point where it's it's gonna get me where I need to, need it to be for it to demonstrate everything that I I'm going to demonstrate. So if you could see, I want to say that these little st st stripy lines that I'm making are going to be the metal materials and then uh, all the hard edge lines are going to be all the metal materials. Now whenever I am painting hard surface stuff I tend to do this very often. I tend to make the lines feel more rigid, um, more um, straight, most of the time. Uh, unless there's a reason or design reason why I shouldn't. But otherwise, if it's my own work, this usually tends to happen. And the organic stuff, I'll give more organic shapes. Uh, this is just kind of like design 101 type stuff. Um, but, you know, I, I highly recommend you just practice this and get this in your, this idea of design in your brain um, when you paint. Just because it's good, it's a good fallback. Uh, and then if once you have that as a fallback, then you can kind of rely on breaking it to create new and more interesting concepts. So anyway, so let's say this is our design. And let's say we love this design, which I I do. I love it. It's probably the greatest design I've ever drawn in my life. Um, this is very very untrue. Anyways, so, bam. Knight in shining armor. Now, there's nothing really crazy about this. This is very, very crude line drawing if you look at it. But, what you need to know is there's a few things that I can do with this. Um, one thing that people don't realize is that if you just, you know, if you just put in accurate um, form shadows or shadows essentially, you can make it already look like metal without kind of doing any kind of trick. And I always want to make a good point in telling you guys that, you know, it's not so much about knowing all these tricks that I'm going to show you. Um, it's really about knowing why things look the way they look, so that way you can achieve them um, using tricks that will help you get there faster and more effectively but as you can see I, I got pretty I got pretty decent results by just having some understanding of accuracy about materials and this is going to be more matte material so this won't have those type of features in fact I'm going to make this darker too uh, not because it's matte just because it's just going to make a good graphic read uh, a good graphic separation and now now there's no real technique here it's just really kind of um, you know, it's just painting and understanding what that form is and how that material works, um, or how these materials work, and just painting it according to those those ideals. Um, you know, less stroke is less strokes is more. You know, and in matter of moments, I have a painting, um, a decent looking painting. Now, let's try this again. Now. What I like to do is I like to use a, a mode called Color Dodge uh, on my brush. Not so much on my layers, but on my brush. So I typically like to have the canvas that I'm going to use ready to go. So what I do is I'm going to actually colorize this. Uh, desaturate. I don't want it to be openly bright in that color. And I have it really low saturated, but you can still see, as you can tell, you can still see there's a slight hue shift, right? And that's all you need. 
It's that slight hue shift. And this is going to work. And I might actually make this a little bit darker too. Just a little bit. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add that the dark color for the matte. Because matte materials really very, very uh, rarely get any kind of uh, strong highlight on them. Uh, and when, when they do, it's really because the light is just like right on them. Um, but other than that, like you can get away with just painting this thing almost as a solid color with some subtle form change. And luckily for me, when I put those scribbles in, uh, those in indicate some of that form change for me without me actually doing double the work. And if I want, I can use a smudge brush that I have already prerequisite, um, and I can just go back in here and just soften these edges to make this feel more cloth, like cloth-like. But that's for that's a different video um, that you you can go find on Schoolism in one of my interviews. Uh, I talk about some of the CS6 tool presets that I have created. But that's neither here or there. Um, and right now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint a color on this. So what I want to do is use this brush that I've been using, and it doesn't matter what brush you use, um, but, you, you know, there are differences in different brushes for sure, but if you understand how to use your brush, you should be able to use it effectively regardless. Um, I like to use a circle brush um, or some sort of uh, circle brush because it's just really um, omnidirectional. It has no strong opinion either way. Uh, this one does. So what I want to do is reduce that a little bit. And right here, all I'm going to do is just pick wild colors um, that I think that the lighting is affecting this material. So this, this is where this comes in handy. And you got to be really, really open to experimentation. So I'm going to make even a new layer just so I don't have to do all those um, adjustment layers again. But... What I mean by experimenting is like what what colors are lighting this material? And the thing about metals is that it's highly reflective, um, so reflective that sometimes it's almost a mirror. Uh, so this material that I'm painting is a, a mirror-ish type material. Um, the darker it is, the less of it you'll see. But um, but for the most part, metals are pretty pretty reflective, and that's because of high specularity. So what I'm going to do here is just kind of see how I feel about this blue. And I'll just put it in, like, kind of like the opposite of what I did with this, where I was painting in kind of the highlights uh, subtractively, where I was painting around the highlight, creating the highlight out of shadow forms. This one I'm doing the complete opposite, where I'm actually just painting in the highlight the way that I feel like it would be located. And then, um, once I do that... I, I, dramatically increase and decrease my brush size. So what, what I'm going to do here is actually go back to that brush that I had before because I feel like it's just going to be a lot more fun. Yeah, look at that. Um, and then I'll go even more high intensity. And this is one thing that you should pay attention to. If you start here, you should definitely constantly be moving, be moving your uh, color through both hue or through all three which is hue, saturation, and uh, brightness. So uh, originally it was right here, so you can see that I moved it here, which did affect everything. And then this will allow me to get some of these really fun uh, colors and highlights that look a little more accurate. Now, the thing about lighting that I, I want to make sure that you understand um, is that Lighting is not really difficult. Lighting is actually super simple. What you do is you just make very few lights, maybe like two to three at at the most, and that's when you start having dramatic lighting. Um, see, right now there's only really one light source. It's coming from the top. So I'm just going to pretend that that's all that's here, and that's all I'm going to do. And you can see how all that one lighting does for me. And... Uh, I'll put a little bit on the matte materials, but I'll go very, very light with my brush, but have that matte material bounce back up into this. And you can see like how my I'm getting really dramatic results 
pretty quickly. Now, like I said, if you keep your lighting situation super simple, then you'll have a super simple painting uh, or super dramatic lighting, uh, especially if you have high contrast in that lighting. Now, if you add another light, then you can add a little bit more interest. And I typically tell people don't pick the same light. Pick like a, a different color light. So let's go with the orange. And let's throw that in there and see how that works. I'm going to color pick that too. And then just know where your forms are at and light accordingly. That's really where the discrepancy comes from. It's not so much that people don't understand how to light things. as they don't know what they're lighting. If you don't know what you're lighting, then yeah, you're not going to be able to light it. Um, but if you do, lighting is really easy. Um, it becomes super easy. And you can see how just with a few um, strokes of this color dodge, I can get really these really awesome highlight effects. And this is specifically for metal. Um, you, you can tell that how I'm approaching the matte material, I'll do a, very, a glaze over very lightly. Um, and if I really want to get some of that color dodge in there and I want to go really intense, I usually make the color that I'm choosing at a much darker uh, value so that way if I want to get some more accurate lighting on the actual matte material that way it prevents the color dodge from being really color dodgy and really attacking that that value uh, but fortunately for me the, 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 the value or the color is already darker so I don't have to deal with that as much but anyway and then I can add another light and I wouldn't pick any, some, any other random color because that's just a little too much contrast for my liking um, I mean, even though it's it's cool, it looks nice, um, I, personally, I, I don't like it. And so I'll pick something that's really closer to the both of these colors that I've chosen, so that way there's a little bit more harmony in the in the colors that are all over this thing. Um, but, you know, it's up to you. you know, there's no right way um, to... There's no right way to really go about design, as long as it's the way that's required you know and right now this is my painting so i don't really have any direction so i can do whatever i want and you know i went from this extremely crude line drawing and just using color dodge um i got this and you can see how this can get me to a really strong spot and i could take this this color right here and i have the gradation tool selected specifically right now um, and i can just kind of lightly um, well, now I've put up 20%. I could put this to kind of hint that there's that light coming down, and then I can do the same thing with the blue. Um, let's go a little bit higher up there. And what I like to do now is I'm going to go back to my brush, and I pick like a pretty close white. Actually, I'm just going to pick white. And I'm actually going to turn off color dodge so I can just paint it back in so that some of this stuff is getting super hot from that. But what's great now is that once you Im implement a lot of this, these colors, uh, I mean, because you, can't, you shouldn't leave it this way, but my point is that now you have all these fabulous colors um, to work with, um, you can go back and, you know, make corrections or you can make adjustments however you want. Now it's, it's the ball's in your court. You know, but don't get, don't forget that if you don't know how to light or understand the basics of metals and of, of material, then you know all these tricks they're gonna get you so far. Uh, they're only gonna get you so far until you realize oh, I don't know what else to do now. I'm just gonna uh, you know kind of just look at my painting and hope that it works now. But unfortunately, it won't. It'll tend to get worse. So I really recommend you you work on your fundamentals. I really do. Uh, but in the meanwhile, you know, definitely chest it out, uh, and you you may some of you may find that this is really hard and it doesn't uh, make it work any better. And some of you who have a little bit more advanced skills will be able to see, wow, there is a lot of power in this. And uh, some of you have already do this, uh, but if you don't, you know, this is one technique that I highly recommend. So uh, good luck, and I hope you guys enjoyed the video.